Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Zach Gray, and I'm really excited to be here with you for part one of my three steps to doubling your sales in your photography business. Now, if you're not familiar with me or you're not familiar with exactly who I am, let me jump back a little bit and start just a little bit prior to this so you know exactly who I am and why I'm hopefully qualified to teach this to you. So I'm Zach Gray. I've been a wedding photographer since 2007, and I've been coaching photographers for many, many, many years. So after starting a successful six-figure photography business that went from making $500 in June of 2007 at my very first wedding to making a six-figure income in 2008, I really started growing and enhancing my photography business, then realizing that I, not only did I love shooting beautiful photos of beautiful couples and telling beautiful stories, but also that I had this knack for helping other people do the same thing. And that started to get the attention of the industry. So I started working with companies like SanDisk. I was publishing People Magazine. I was a Westcott Top Pro, helping sell and create marketing for their products for over 10 years. I hosted a series of in, a very successful in-camera workshops that about 1,500 photographers came through or helped them build their business and shoot better off-camera flash photos. I was on Creative Live in 2012, and it ended up being one of the highest selling Creative Lives of all time. Um, and then I was a featured speaker at WPPI for many, many years in a row, speaking all over the place, helping a lot of photographers. And then I started really getting into coaching because I really realized um, that coaching was one of the most impactful ways for me to help another photographer. If I could come alongside of you, put you in a group, talk with you one-on-one, -on -one, and create a specific plan, I would really be able to help accelerate your business like nothing else that I was doing. No blog posts, no courses, um, uh, you know, no YouTube videos could ever do or replace the power of individualized coaching. So as I started helping other photographers that I knew at the time building their businesses, this is some of the results that happened. I did some marketing and consulting for some of my friends, Amy and Jordan, and they said this about me. I could have not have built our career without Zach. He kicked our butt in the most loving way and he was a truth teller. I really helped Amy and Jordan think about the marketing side of their business and how they were helping other photographers build their brand and they've done something very phenomenal and successful with it. Caitlin James said this about me. She said we quadrupled our business. Zach approached us about three years ago and said that we, we could be making almost triple what we were currently making, and we literally laughed at him. I remember that. And well, we were wrong. We actually quadrupled, and Zach played a huge role in the financial change in our life. Then the last one, uh, Vanessa Joy, easy to understand and execute his plan. I love this. She said, Zach, Zach is one of the most well-respected and successful business owners in my industry. When I came to him for mentoring advice, he gave me not only easy to understand evaluate, evaluation, evaluation of what I was doing, but also motivating strategy where, where I could go from here. So I love that. But the reality is, is I'm just this uneducated kid from nowhere. I grew up in a tiny town in northern Minnesota. I believe it or not, I only have a third grade education. This is the last house that I, that I lived in when I lived up in northern Minnesota. We were very poor. My dad left when I was really young. And I really asked myself the question all the time as a young man, do I have what it takes? Do I have what it takes to succeed, to do anything of value? But what I learned, and I'm going to teach you guys some of these great principles I'm really excited to teach you, changed everything for me. In 2011, uh, this amazing couple, Luke and Kat, came to me, and they were where I was back in 2007 when I was just getting my business started. And they had this dream. They were cattle farmers, but they had this dream. They wanted to shoot beautiful weddings and tell people stories, and they wanted to make a great living doing this. So they came to me. And here's what had happened. They had spent an entire year working on their business. And at that point, they had booked nine clients, averaging $1,100 per client shooting weddings, which is not very good. And they had zero after sales, uh, uh, zero sales after every single event. So their gross projected income was about $9,000. And they actually only profited a few thousand bucks. So it wasn't going very well. So they came to me uh, after almost giving up on their entire dream. And I did coaching for them. I spent uh, a full day and then three months after that coaching them on how to strategize, build, grow, develop their photography brand one-on-one. -on -one. And they had some phenomenal results, but it wasn't at a cheap cost, right? They spent $3,500 just for the one day that they spent with me. And I, you know, I like to fire things off from a fire hose. They really were drinking uh, from a fire hose that way. I do not recommend it, not for the faint of heart, but here is the results. After one year of coaching with me, they booked 30 plus clients the following year, 
averaging $3,500 per client with a $2,300 average sale after each event and a gross projected income of $174,000. And they were only, uh, they were profiting about 80% of that, putting about 80% of that in their pocket, paying taxes on that, right? What a result. That is the legacy that I'm so grateful that I've got to be a part of and to live. And that's what I hope um, shows you that I not only understand where you're coming from, but I have the expertise to help you guys grow your photography business. This is Luke and Kat today. They built this beautiful wedding photography business brand down in Texas and established it in 2011 and really built something phenomenal and beautiful. So what I'm gonna teach you guys today comes out of the Photo Mentorship Pro, which is a place that I coach all the time. And it's part of what's called the paid to shoot system. So I'm gonna teach you guys some of my best stuff from that. So if you're ready, get out your notepads, get out your notebooks, get out your computer, take notes along with me, watch this video, and I'm gonna give you guys my three steps to doubling your sales. And this is gonna be part one. It's gonna be three total videos coming out over the next couple of days, and I can't wait to share all of them with you. All right, welcome to part one of our three-part series on how to double the sales in your photography business. Let's dive right in. So what exactly do you need? What's the very first and most important thing that you need if you wanna grow your photography business? Well, you need to have a website that convinces potential clients to book you. I love this quote from my friend to Furious. He says, customers will go where services are clearly defined and executed. So what does he mean by that? He means that the most important thing, the first critical step that you need to do on your website and in your business in general is to be specific about who you are there to serve. So key one, niche marketing. So if you wanna be a wedding photographer, as an example, Weddings only, put weddings on your website. You can even add a positioning statement about how you photograph couples in love or happy brides or luxury brides. We're gonna talk more about that coming up. Whoever you are there to serve in your photography business, and in this case, if you're shooting weddings, your wedding photography business. Now, you can always change this later, but saying something about the work that you wanna do is the first critical step. Take a look at one of the best wedding photographers in the entire country right now, my friend Caitlin James. One of my coaching clients, you go to her website and what do you see? The wedding experience, everything you need to know about her philosophy process and press plus what it really means to be a KJ bride. Ooh, what is that? That sounds intoxicatingly cool. A KJ bride, a Caitlin James bride. We're gonna talk more about what that means as well. But the goal here is step number one, you need to build a website that convinces people to book you. And in order to do that, you need to niche down. You need to be very specific. You need to say, what type of client you're there to serve. And here's the reason, is that if you are uh, if you come down with, say, a brain tumor, are you gonna go to your general doctor to get your brain tumor fixed, or are you gonna go to a brain surgeon who specializes in tumors? Of course, we all know the answer. You're gonna go to that specialist, right? So a bride, as an example, who's dreaming of her wedding day since she's four years old and they're having this expensive wedding, do you think she wants it photographed by anyone or does she want it photographed by a wedding photographer? She wants it photographed by a wedding photographer, just in the same way. Uh, a mom who's getting beach photos wants somebody who specializes in portraits, who's gonna take some beautiful portraits of them on the beach. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't shoot beach portraits if you're a wedding photographer, but what it means is you're building a website that's speaking directly to the potential customer that you wanna draw in. And where your focus goes, momentum flows, right? Keep that in mind, right? The more you focus with intensity, the better chance you have of building momentum because marketing to portraits and marketing to seniors and marketing to babies or marketing to boudoir or whatever it may be is very different than marketing to say weddings, right? So whatever genre of photography you wanna get into, and we're gonna focus a lot on weddings, right? But replace this with any genre. Uh, we're gonna focus on weddings to showcase that to you because that's an easy one to showcase. But keep that in mind that wherever you focus, right? That's where you're gonna build that momentum and energy. So that's step number one. Step number two, on your website, you need emotional storytelling images. I love this quote from Jack Trout. He says, people make purchasing decisions based on their emotional connection to a product or service. So put the most compelling emotional storytelling photos on your website. Show, don't tell. Keep that in mind. Show, don't tell. I just talked about this on my Facebook page. It's really important 
for you to show what you do to the world. Show the beautiful stories that you tell. Don't just talk about them, but show them. And look at how simple it is. You have an emotional photo and a quote. Completely amazing. We couldn't have asked for a better experience. Look at uh, my friends Amy and Jordan. They have this beautiful website. And look at all the joy and happiness. It feels airy and bright and full of happiness and smiles. And a bride looks at this and goes, I want that to be my wedding. I want to feel that way. I want to look that way. So emotional storytelling images, that's key number two. Key number three. It says key number two on here, but it's key number three. Nothing's perfect in life, right? Even the numbering on my keynote here. That's totally fine. But key number three, testimonies. No one cares what you say about your photography. They care about what other people have to say. So use testimonies. Look at this from my friend Caitlin James Upside. I'm going to use them a lot because they're a great example. Cindy and Nick said, you made us feel so comfortable and you were the perfect mix of laid back while running the photo show with authority. Wow, 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 wow. And a beautiful photo. You want to take it up a notch? Get some video. Send out an email to your clients, any past clients that you've had, and say, can you turn on your camera and say, here's what it was like when I worked with you. If you were, were going to tell three people about me, what would you say? And have them just answer that and then use that in your, on your website. Play a little montage of four or five clients, just like what's on Caitlin James and Amy and Jordan's website. A little montage of clients talking about you because... Of course you're going to talk about yourself. A client expects you to sell yourself. But when somebody else is selling you, when the reviews are good, you start to trust and believe. Now, if you go to anything, go to Amazon.com and go find all the one-star reviewed items. How do you feel about that? Even if all the reviews are fake and none of them are true, you naturally feel that's probably not a very good product. But if it has four and a half or five-star reviews, you're like, this has got to be good. And some of us dig down deep and we make sure that the reviews seem legit. But when you see a bride's face or a past client's face and they're saying, when I worked with Zach, it was the best experience I could ever had. People naturally trust that. So show your clients, right? Number four, not number three, but number four, have a storytelling bio about you and how you help your customers thrive. Look here what Caitlin James does. She says, my role is I'm a believer. I'm a redheaded wedding photographer, educator, believer, and wife to my high school sweetheart and mom to three sweet babies in her arms and one in heaven. Whoa. She's being interesting, funny. She's telling you what she believes at her core. She's telling you about something very personal in her life all in one sentence. Why is she doing this? Because people connect to people, right? Wedding photography, portrait photography, senior photography, uh, uh, maternity photography, whatever it may be, that's a very personal experience with somebody. And the more they get to know you and trust you, the better chance you have of booking them. Look at this. Here's a bunch of photos on her website of her with her family. Here's Amy and Jordan showing a bunch of interesting, fun stuff about the two of them as a couple. And here's even a video of them showing what it's like working with them, them smiling, interacting with their couples. The experience, they call it the AJ experience, the Amy and Jordan experience. This is genius, right? This is brilliant. And it's easy to create and to do to make a website that convinces people to book you. Next, a call to action. Right now, you need, you need to have Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, or whatever it may be on your website. That's good because it shows that your business is alive and it's kicking, so put links to that. But then have a call to action, a contact form that has, has as much information as humanly possible. And why? The more information you put on your contact form, and this is gonna come into play, in video number two that I'm going to put out shortly. The reason this is so important is because it allows somebody to, it allows you to look at a contact and decipher how interested they actually are in you. Are they just looking, found you on Google? Or are they just price shopping? Or have they heard about you? And are they qualified, right? And there's a bunch of really important things you should put on here because the goal of your website is to introduce yourself so that you can do what? you can connect, right? You can get closer to that person. So you can't get closer to them if you just start sending emails back and forth. That's not very intimate. That's not very close. This is a personal business. So we want to get on a phone call. We want to meet in person. That's the goal here. So you notice it says first name, last name, fiance's name, email, confirm email, phone, best time to call. That's awesome. If they put down, call me on Thursday at two o'clock and here's my phone number, they want to, they want to book you. This is really important stuff. Also, photography price point range. How did you hear about us? On a scale of one to 10, how interested are you 
you in having me shoot your wedding. Guess what? I've never booked anyone that was a seven or less. Only eight, nines, or tens. Isn't that interesting? Out of the hundreds of weddings, only people that were an eight, nine, or 10 that filled in the contact form and put eight, nine, or 10. And then tell us more. This is an opportunity for them to t tell the brother their story, to talk. And then you can reply and respond to the things that they say and build more of a connection with that potential customer. Last but not least, love this. You can get a, a little app called Calendly. It's free. You can go on, uh, online and get a, a, a free version of it. And as soon as somebody clicks contact and sends off your contact form on the next step of your website, you can say, hey, do you want to schedule a call with me right now? You can click a button and it'll open up Calendly and it'll show them, show them all the times that you've said you're available for a call. If they click and pick one of those times, it'll automatically put it on your calendar. And now you've eliminated one extra step, which is setting up the time to get on the phone and to talk to this potential customer. This is really cool. And this is a great thing that you can put on your website using something called Calendly. Calendly. Very cool. You can see there in the upper right hand corner, right? It says Calendly. Okay. So we built a website or you're, you now know what you need to put on your website that's going to convince clients to book you. But how do you actually get leads? How do you get people going to the website in the first place that might be interested in booking you? Well, that is the next problem we have to solve. And in my very next video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly the easiest way possible that's foolproof to get people to come to your website, fill out your contact form, and book you. And it's gonna be easier than you ever thought possible. Can't wait for that video to come out. Stay tuned.